final day of February has arrived, and Cole Hamels takes the mound for his second start of the spring. The left-hander's coming off his most impressive and consistent regular season of his career. With the World Series MVP in his pocket and his status with the Phillies being decided on last July, the only thing left for Cole to do is to keep on being Cole. So far here in spring training, and the fans are going to settle in today at Bright House Field with the Atlanta Braves coming to town to get a chance to see Cole Hamels for the second time this spring. He's coming off a scoreless outing his first time out, and now he'll get a second chance to up those innings here in Clearwater. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Chris Wheeler. Sergeant Murph will be around a little later on in more ways than one. You know, the Atlanta Braves coming to town for the first time this spring. The Phillies will face them a number of times during the regular season. They'll battle for the National League East title, and Cole Hamels will be an important piece for the Phillies in that battle. Well, these guys have had a lot of battles in the past. Cole Hamels always taking his regular turn against the Atlanta Braves. They know him. He knows them. They have made some changes, of course. Had a tremendous game against them last year. See the breaking ball, good fastballs. His cutter, he pitched a complete game on a very warm night at Citizens Bank Park and had tremendous stuff. There's Michael Bourne, a guy who's not around anymore. Finish it up with a changeup right there to Prado, another guy who isn't around anymore with the Atlanta Braves. Cole Hamels against Atlanta has had very, very good games. Now, the other day, he made his first spring training start, and he was fine. They just wanted to see what they could get at him with 35 pitches or two innings. He breezed through those two innings. Speaking of the breeze, it was really windy here, and it blew some balls back that may have been foul balls and prolonged his outing a little bit, as you saw right there. This is what the guy did last year. Just a tremendous season. Was rewarded with a big, big new contract at midseason and went on to have a tremendous season with the 17 wins. Now, Paul Hamels is one of those guys you look at as one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball and he sat down and talked about what makes him what he is. The game of baseball it's it's such result based and statistics after statistics um, that you know I think people kind of look too deep into sort of situations and you know I feel like I've been able to improve every year uh, and that's what I'm striving to uh, to do every year is to improve every aspect of my game. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it is. It's a team game. So some of these sort of statistics that people look at to really kind of decipher if you're good or not, um, or if you had a great year or if you had a down year, um, really aren't kind of those sort of personal uh, goals that, that somebody can actually obtain. So, I, you know, I'm just trying to go out there and really, uh, you know, strive to, to be the best pitcher I possibly can and, and to help a team win. No time you think about Cole Hamels, he doesn't have bad years. He'll have some bad stretches once in a while, and it's always because he's not healthy. And he is very, very healthy right now, very confident. They look for big things from him. Well, we talked about the fact that he's going to face the Atlanta Braves a lot this year, and he's going to battle the Atlanta Braves for the National League East. The Braves are in town. As we mentioned, it's our first look at a brand-new Braves team. Well, sometimes you hear about additions to a team, and you kind of ho-hum, but not this. Look at these two guys that came over, the Upton brothers, two tremendous players. B.J. here in this area for so long, played against the Phillies in the World Series. Justin Upton over from Arizona, a tremendous Tremendous talent, can hit with power, can run, can throw. So, yeah, these two guys should really, really help him. And both of those guys are in the starting lineup today for the Atlanta Braves. Jason Hayward is in the starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves. So they brought some of their everyday players over from Orlando to face the Phillies here in Clearwater. Well, Dominic Brown's also in the starting lineup for the Phillies. He probably has, at least for the first week of spring games, have had the best swings of anybody else in the Phillies lineup. Speaking of swings, huh, how about this swing? Huh, reminiscent, huh? We'll see more of that later on. <laughs> Baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Is it a time you experience good banking? By Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. And by Toyota. Every new Toyota purchase comes with Toyota Care. Let's go places.
It's a comfortable afternoon for baseball here in Clearwater, Florida. Temperatures are in the high 60s, low 70s as we get set for the Braves and the Phillies. The Braves have won three straight spring training games. Meanwhile, the Phillies lost yesterday to the Minnesota Twins. Let's take a look at Atlanta's starting lineup. Leading it off at second base, Tyler Pasternicki. Jason Hayward bats second. Justin Upton hits third, followed by his brother BJ. Chris Johnson, the third baseman, bats fifth. Evan Gaddis, the catcher, will hit sixth. Ernesto Mejia, the first baseman, bats seventh. Todd Cunningham, eighth, and batting ninth and playing shortstop. He's getting set to go to the World Baseball Classic is Ramiro Pena. And they'll face Phillies left-hander Cole Hamels. He'll probably get through three innings this afternoon. He threw two innings his last time out wheels and allowed just one hit and had one strikeout. Yeah, Tom, one time through the rotation so far, and now it's Cole's turn to pitch here against a team he's very, very familiar with. He was fine here the other day. It'd be interesting to see if he throws his curveball this afternoon. He didn't show that the other day. He just went with basic cutter, change up, fastball mix. Well, he'll face Tyler Pasternicki to start things off. Pasternicki, who last year spent some time in the major leagues and also in the minors, playing shortstop today, or playing second base, excuse me, today. He's a shortstop by trade. And the first pitch of the afternoon is in there for a strike, so we're underway. The count is no balls and one strike. You know, the Phillies will face the Braves a handful of times during spring training. You know, they'll face uh, teams within their division and outside their division, but it's the Braves they'll face most often within their division. I wonder how much they hold back as the month goes on. Well, some pitchers are like that. They will not throw guys in situations, in uh, RBI situations, things like that. Pitches, they'll throw them during the season. Uh, you know, whether they're called Hamels feels that way, I can't tell you that. But I've seen it over the years and known guys that were that way. They said, if I'm facing a team that we're going to see in the season, especially early, I'm not going to show them some things. So far, the Phillies starters the first time through the rotation. They've allowed just a couple of runs. Here's the one two pitch outside a change up two balls and two strikes. You know, no, no, and Cole the way we all know him. I think he probably think that's overthinking a little bit. You know that he's not going to he's not going to do those kind of things. Now whether or not he doesn't throw curveballs just because he has decided he's not going to throw them yet. Swing at a best at a high fastball. We saw that fastball the other day. It was effective. That one was up in the zone and effective. And there's one away here in the first. Yeah, it's up. As Tom says, it's up. You know, Cole stays down so much in the zone with his change up cutters and his other fastballs that uh, he can get a strikeout on that pitch. And that's the one that used to foul off so much against him, the right handed hitters, especially when he didn't have anything to come inside the way that he does now. And I'll bring John, uh, Jason Hayward to the plate. Hayward two for nine so far, and both of his hits have been home runs for the Braves. He takes pretty good rip and a foul ball at the first pitch. We're just seeing this guy down the field before the game. We're talking to Roger McDowell and some of their guys, and he's a man now. He has really matured in so many ways, and look out. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Oh I think it'll be interesting to see who the Braves utilize as their leadoff hitter without Michael Bourne. B.J. Upton's in the on-deck circle. You think you would think he has a chance to be the team's leadoff hitter? Outside, Hayward, you know, he could be anywhere in the lineup in the middle. He could be, he could bat second, he could bat third, he could bat fourth. Yeah, and he's getting to the point. There's you see, Upton is uh, getting to the point now where left-handers don't bother him the way they did when they first came up, except. There'll be certain left-handers like this guy that can bother anybody. Yeah, two strikeouts for Hamels to start today's ball game. Cole Hamill throwing a lot of strikes. Looks like it cut a little bit away from him. And that's such an effective pitch that he added a few years ago, and it, it's really changed the way that he can approach pitching. Well, now with two outs, here's Justin Upton. Up did playing left field today, where he'll play for the Braves this season. Last year he hit. 280 with 17 home runs and 67 runs batted in. The Braves acquired him late in the offseason. And a deal that included a number of prospects going back to the Diamondbacks and Martin Prado, who signed an extension with the Diamondbacks. That ball's hit well to center field. Revere on the run out toward the track, and it's off the top of the wall. And Justin Upton will pull in the second with a two out double. It sound like you hit that ball at the end of the bat and almost went out to dead center. There's a lot of wind. There's going to be one more day of this, a southerly wind or, or warm wind. 
that's blowing out in this ballpark. Couldn't tell from that angle. And he got a good swing. I see. Yeah. It's right off. The, it's right out near the end of the bat. And I think Hamels was surprised too that it carried that far. Shows you how strong uh, Justin Upton is too. Well, that'll bring his brother BJ to the plate. BJ hitting cleanup today. Last year he had 28 home runs and 78 RBIs. And a short hop for Michael Young. Paul Hamels through the first inning. He leaves one in scoring position. No runs, one hit, one man left. We head to the bottom of the first here in Clearwater. The Phil's getting a chance to bat for the first time. Oh, a good top of the first inning for Cole Hamels. He allows just the one hit and nothing else. So we'll go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at Charlie Manuel's starting lineup. Kind of an interesting twist today. Leading it off at center field, Ben Revere. Jimmy Rollins, the shortstop, bat second. Chase Utley hits third, followed by Ryan Howard and Michael Young. Dominic Brown is in right field. He has swung the bat exceptionally well this spring. Darren Ruff's in left field. He'll bat seven. Lance Nix is the DH batting eight. And batting ninth and catching is Eric Kratz. And they'll face veteran left-hander Paul Mahal, acquired last year in the middle of the year from the Chicago Cubs. He went on to win four games for the Braves. He's made one start so far, hasn't allowed anything as of yet for Atlanta. He's a nice, serviceable major league pitcher. Paul Mahal with the Pirates for a number of years, as Tom said, with the Cubs then. He got all kinds of different pitches. The thing that makes him, I think, is he's a funky delivery. He's kind of hard for hitters to pick up. And he's one of those guys when he stays out of the middle of the plate, he can really be effective when he doesn't, he gets hit. Well, here's Ben Revere leading it off. Revere's three for 10 so far this spring, and he takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. And, you know, Wheels, we said there's a, a little bit of a change in the lineup. Revere's leading off, and Jimmy Rollins is batting second today. Time to experiment a little bit. Jimmy's going to be gone pretty soon anyway to go to the World Baseball Classic. You're probably going to see Revere lead off quite a bit. Uh, you know, he certainly has tools to lead off for the way he can run, slap it around. Charlie Manuel said the other day that he just wants to see him more. In different spots, so that's the reason why he's batting leadoff today. One ball, one strike. The count to Revere. Jimmy, he knows Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say about Jimmy Rollins? Yeah, he, the Phillies have been a very, very good team when he leads off, and I think that's the way they're leaning right now. It's a long season. Outside three and one the count to Revere see that funky delivery of Mahalam's and he kind of short arms a ball up there jumps at the hitters and that's another reason why he can be very effective. Good pitcher good guy to have in your club 13 and 11 overall last year combined between the Braves and the Cubs. And now the count full three and two. Ben Revere was on the trip down to Fort Myers yesterday Phillies took the early lead. As you see, Vic Carapaza behind the plate, but wound up uh, losing and committing three errors in the process. Down low, ball four. Revere works off the leadoff work. Yeah, that's one of the things that he said he was going to try and do this spring. Uh, be a little more patient, walk a little more. We mentioned earlier, uh, Charlie Manuel points it out too about Revere. When he swings, he makes contact. So he's not a guy that's going to foul off three or four pitches in a 10 pitch at bat and walk. 
Well, we'll keep an eye on him over at first base. He has had his legs so far this spring. He has scored three runs. Rollins one for five so far. Wheels mentioned he's going to be leaving for the World Baseball Classic, and he'll be leaving on Saturday. So tomorrow will be his last game when the Phillies head to Tampa to take on the Yankees. He took a shot at the hole on the right side there. Jimmy's that kind of player that if you bat him second, he knows how to play the game, and he'll try to do it the right way. But there's a huge hole on the right side, as you see there, to shoot a ball through. You know, with Pastor Nicky cheating over towards second base. Inside, one and one the count. Well, Hollum, you would think in these kind of situations, would try to pitch inside and make it harder for a guy to do it unless he's adept at inside outing the ball. <clears throat> Tied him up, and it's one and two. Trying to survive, Jeff. Get hurt. Throw over to first, and Revere is back ahead of the tag. Ben Revere stole 40 bases last year. He was caught nine times. Some of the articles uh, coming out of yesterday's game against the the Twins from Fort Myers. Ron Gardenhire was talking about Revere's speed and his ability to lead off if need be. And he felt like, given the opportunity, he could certainly do that. So one Samuel with the stopwatch timing Mahalm to the plate. Sometimes you run 2 2, almost always 3 2 with a combination like this. The Phillies the first couple days here in Clearwater were running 3-1, 3-2, even with nobody out. Yeah, this is not a base stealer situation. As you look at Utley on deck there, but they'll probably run now because of the count. And Mahalam, not necessarily a strikeout pitcher, run on the count here to try and stay out of the double play, maybe get a first and third. There goes Revere. Pitch is chopped towards shortstop, and they'll get one over at first. So they stay out of the double play. Enya takes care of Rollins. And one out here in the bottom of the first. And that'll bring Chase Utley to the plate. Well, if there was any concern, this will alleviate any concern for fans about Chase Utley. We had mentioned the other day before the ball game that he was scratched because of the wet field. And yesterday he stayed back here in Clearwater, which we expected. He took batting practice on this field with everybody else while the team was playing down in Fort Myers against the Twins. So Chase is just fine. His knee is fine, or knees are fine. Yeah, that field was really wet when the game started. It rained hard in the morning. Uh, had no problem getting the game in then because it, it was gone by that point. But why take any chances? Oh, they also dumped a lot of the water out in shallow right field. Just behind where Chase would play. He takes a strike. One ball and one strike. He's one for three so far with an RBI. His RBI came in the first game of spring training here at Bright House Field. Off the hand. Space hit it to left center field. Revere had a wait, so he'll hold up. Ryan Sandberg held him up as the throw comes in on one hop from Justin Upton. I think Ben Revere was thinking, I could have scored on that even though I held up. Yeah. You don't know the you don't know the catcher's gonna get short hop like that either. There's no way Sandberg can run him there when he had a hold that long. Unless you're unless maybe you're trying to win the game in the bottom of the ninth and you're doing everything you can to get that run across the plate. But in this case, the left fielder up and getting there so quickly. And the throw was actually decent, but it takes a short hop. Yeah, he would have scored, but last time I heard a guy in this game had a crystal ball be the first time. <laughs> I just like the fact that he put himself in good position to score. Exactly. Came into third real hard, and that, that's not his decision. It's the third base coach's decision. Runners on first and third for Ryan Howard. Howard has played in every game so far, including a trip down to Fort Myers yesterday. Left-hander like Mahalo pitches away a lot. They're not in the overshift on the right side with Howard hitting. 
a, a very conventional left handed hitter pull defense. There you see it. Ryan was 0 for 3 in the first game here in Clearwater. Since that time, he's 6 for his last 9. The thought, and Charlie has talked about this during spring training, the thought is to give Ryan Howard as many at bats as possible to make him confident and make him feel comfortable at the plate. And well, so far as I mentioned, he's played in every game. On the hands, fair ball down the right field line. That'll get one in. Utley's on his way to third, and Utley will have a chance to score. Nope, he's going to be held at third base. Hayward did a nice job handling the corner, but the Phillies take a one nothing lead on an RBI double by Ryan Howard. Really interesting to talk to Charlie about that right there. That's one of the things with Ryan Howard that he'll get jammed once in a while, and then he'll start backing off the plate. And they want him up a little closer, and don't fear getting jammed. Because he's so strong. See him fight that one off? He's so strong that if he pulls the ball like that down the line, the odds are he's still going to hit it pretty hard. And right there past the first baseman down the line. And that, that's a, that's one of those things that if he'll do more of that and stand closer to the plate and not fear getting jammed, he'll crush that stuff away from him better. Well, here's Michael Young with runners on second and third. And it's one ball and no strikes to Young. They play the infield back, particularly up the middle. Johnson, the third baseman, is in even with the bag. Right, so they're conceding a run here with a ground ball, and an experienced player by Michael Young is well aware of that. Young so far is 0 for 8. He's hit the ball hard, though, at times. Back toward the middle. That'll get a run home. And it's going right through the hole. It'll get two runs home. Howard scores easily right behind Chase Utley. It's 3 nothing Phillies. Pastor Nicky had it sized up and his glove was a little deep and it went right through the five. And what a bad hop either. How many times do you talk about if you do the right thing, you may get more out of it? And there it is. Perfect example of doing the right thing, hitting the ball towards the middle of the diamond to get a run in, and then you get a break when the second baseman, Pastor Nicky, Tom says, doesn't make the play. Well, they'll score one RBI for Michael Young and an error, which allows Ryan Howard to score. So Michael Young picks up his first ribby of the spring. Three nothing Phillies. And here's Dominic Brown. Dominic is four for nine with six runs scored so far. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 1. He also has three runs batted in, two home runs. Well, he didn't recognize that pitch was a breaking ball or cutter. But I think in his mind he went up there looking for a fastball to hammer on the first pitch, especially with that big hole on the right side. And the wind blowing out. Oh. First curveball. Looked like and it, it looked like it was hanging. Of course, we don't have to hit it. Dominic hit one of the longer home runs you'll see here in, in Clearwater. In fact, we've seen two of them so far. One by Miguel Cabrera and then this one. Yeah, that's a big time homer over the batting eye. He came said, here the other day. You know, he said it, he didn't know how far it went because he wasn't looking after he left the batter's box. And everybody was trying to describe to him how far it actually went. It went far. Here's a long one. And there's a base hit to right field. Young. On his way to third, Hayward's throw cut off, and now Brown's caught between first and second. Young dancing off the third base bag. And here he comes, the throw to the plate, and Michael Young is tagged out. Well, that's all bad stuff by the Phillies there, except for the swing by Dominic Brown. He hit a breaking ball away. It was a good swing. But then he gets frisky going around. Great job by Michael Young to first to third on that play. Then the Braves do a tremendous job cutting that ball off and in the rundown play executing it correctly. Here's the base hit. Now this is real good. Philly should have first and third here. Watch it. Watch it get cut off. Keep it low. Then the infielder can cut it off. And then Dominic Brown thinking well it's going to go through. I can wind up at second base. Now he's trying to stay in the rundown long enough for Young to score. He tries to score and they get him. The only good thing by the Phillies, and that was the base hit. 
Here's Darren Ruff taking the first pitch inside. All right, I've got nine six three four six two. I think I missed a number though in there somewhere. He did a great job because I was just trying to watch a replay. <laughs> Darren Ruff 0 for nine so far. He's been battling a sore right elbow. Charlie Manuel said it's because he's been uh, playing the outfield so much. His arms just getting used to making all those throws. And he whacks the ball foul. It's one and one. <laughs> What you say that was nine six what nine six three four six two I think I may have missed one yeah that's good enough thanks all right I I missed I missed the the, the pitcher coming over so four one two nine six three four one two thank you over towards shortstop and Ramiro Pena gobbles it up the Phillies get three runs in the inning they settle for three they leave one in scoring position. We head to the second here in Clearwater. At least three, and the Braves nothing. Open up the season at Citizens Bank Park against the Kansas City Royals. Model Sporting Goods opening day on Friday, April 5th at 4.05. Free rally towels for all fans. And then the three-game series uh, has a night game on Saturday, Turkey Hill Kids opening night. And then Sunday, April 7th, IBW Local 98, Ryan Howard, wiffle ball set for fans 14 and under. That's after the Phillies open the regular season against these Atlanta Braves. In fact, you're wondering about that whoop ball bat and, uh, and ball. We'll see more of that a little later on in the telecast. Unfortunately. <laughs> Chris Johnson leads it off. He'll be the everyday third baseman. At least it seems that way for the Braves. Terrific giveaway item, though. Great item. Oh, and to the count. And the pitch from Hamels. Ground ball foul. Hamels is two strikeouts so far. Johnson last year started with the Astros, then went over the Diamondbacks, played 92 games with Houston, 44 with the with the D-backs. Overall, he hit 281 with 15 home runs and 76 runs batted in. Pretty good throwing in the Justin Upton deal. Well, they need a third baseman. Chipper Jones, everybody knows, is retired, and Prado went in the deal. Sounded like he broke his bat, caught by Rollins, one away here in the second. Well, earlier, Greg Murphy got a chance to talk with Bill's pitching coach, Rich Duby. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, Rich, one time uh, through the starting rotation this spring so far, are the guys uh, just about where you expected them to be at this time of the year? Uh, starting rotation's been fine, um, you know, and it's going to take time for everybody. You know, they, they got to get out there and get the reps. Uh, We've had some guys struggle out of the bullpen, but again, it's very, very early. As long as we're staying healthy and able to get our reps in and get our deliveries in, 
you know, we'll come together at the end of this thing. You know, one of the big storylines, of course, this spring that people are watching is that bullpen and to see how it will develop. As the pitching coach, what are you looking for? What are you hoping to see from some of these guys uh, in an effort to stand, stand up and make this team? Consistency. I mean, you, you know, pitch out of the bullpen. You might have an outing here or there that you, you struggle, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a comfortable feeling to a manager and pitching coach that uh, when we put you in there, we're going to get consistency, and that, that's what we're looking for, that and being able to handle the environment of Major League Baseball. So, um, you know, again, it's very, very early right now, so I kind of wipe aside the first couple outings, and then we'll go from there. Mike Adams is one guy that we haven't seen yet. I know you have uh, and seen him at length. When can we expect to see him, and what have you seen from him on the side so far? You see him today. Okay. Uh, Mike's scheduled to pitch today, and and uh, he's been throwing the ball fine. Actually, farther along than I expected. And, uh, you know, he'll have uh, some time in between out and see. We don't want to get him out there too many times too early. So he'll be out there today, and then we'll go from there. All right, Rich. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. No problem. Guys? All right, Murph. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. It's always good to hear from Rich Doobie. As he said, Mike Adams will pitch uh, later on today. They expect Adams to make eight appearances or in that neighborhood before the end of spring training. Cole Hamels, meanwhile, well, he looks pretty crisp today. Three strikeouts. Good cutter. Looked like. Oh, there's a changeup. Boy, that thing really. You forget, you know, that he throws a changeup. Left handed pitcher will throw a changeup to a right handed batter in. And that's so rare. Almost all the times from lefties are going to go down and away. Ernesto Mejia is playing first base today for the Braves. His command is really good. The ball is not in the middle of the plate. To any of these hitters, and what a—that's tough to do this early in the year. Yeah, Mejia was hoping for a ball right in the middle of the plate. It looked like he was trying to send it to Dunedin. Well, he'll corkscrew in a changeup. Fastball upstairs, one and one the count. Mejia last year hit 24 home runs and had 92 runs batted in in the minor leagues for the Braves. Playing first base today, Freddie Freeman will be the everyday first baseman for Atlanta. At a play, and it's one and two. The Braves like their big club, but they also like their farm system. They feel like they've got a number of uh, players that uh, will make an impact in the next several years. We brought a kid over here today, a catcher named Bethancourt, Christian Bethancourt, that they really like. And a call strike three. Mm. Boy, he snuck one right on the inside part of the plate against Mejia. And Hamels has four strikeouts through the first two innings. Nothing across for the Braves. Cole Hamels, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely feeling this afternoon. Here in the order. Bottom of the second, Phillies lead it 3-0. They scored three in the first against Paul Mahal, who's back out there. And will face Lance Nix, Eric Kratz, and then the top of the order, Ben Revere. Freddie Gonzalez getting set for his third year as the manager of the Braves. Carlos Tosca, his bench coach, sitting over the railing there. Subscribe to MLB.TV Premium today and watch over 150 select spring training games live.
plus every out of market regular season game live or on demand on over 250 mobile and connected devices. Visit Phillies.com for details. You have a couple of pretty good instructors over here with them today. The crime dog is here, Fred McGriff, and the pride of Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, Eugene Garber is also here. Chance to catch up with Gino before the game. That was fun. It was great watching uh, the Phillies hitters. Kevin Franzen came up and said, we should all do the hitters, the Fred McGriff uh, follow through in his honor while he's here. That was some follow through. <laughs> it's very pronounced, majestic. Oh, and to the count to Lance Nix. Oh, what a player he was. He makes his home in this area. A lot of folks uh, talk about Fred McGriff as possibly getting more attention for the Hall of Fame with all of the uh, steroid talk that's been going on recently because his numbers seem to be as clean as any. And his career, even though it spanned a handful of teams, uh, <laughs> was. I guess prolific to say the least 493 home runs. He was dangerous. From Tampa from this area as we said and still lives here. There he is. Talking to Jimmy Rollins there's Mike Schmidt next to uh, Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff still looks like uh, he is in shape to play. He does. Plays a lot of golf seen him at different places in this area. And it's not, you know, Phillies are doing that, obviously, with Mike Schmidt standing there. More and more teams bring these guys back. Eric Kratz sends one of the air to right center field. It's playable. Todd Cunningham, the center fielder, makes the call. So Kratz is retired on one pitch. And back to the top of the order for Ben Rubio. You have a history of these two franchises. You can bring pretty good guys around to instruct. He says the way Michael Jack keeping the sun out of his eyes. I guess so. That's cool. <laughs> There's two real good pros right there. They played the game the right way, both of them. No hot dogging, just go out and play and beat people. Fred McGriff, though, you think about the number of home runs, 493 home runs. Well, we saw a lot of them, Tom, Oof. unfortunately. Revere takes a strike. It's 0-1. McGriff is 26th all-time in home runs with his 493. Five-time All-Star. Oh, and to the count to Revere. Wheels, if you were signing uh, the the paperback books, paperback version of your book, that ball would have went right into your lap. <laughs> that's where it was. That's right. That's where the signings. That's where the signings take place down in that area. You're right. For from the booth or a view from the booth, whichever view, view from the booth. Right. Thank you. Thank you for getting the title correct. <laughs> Revere walked his first time up and then came around to score the first run for the Phillies. Phillies scored three in the first. Oh, and to the count. And one ball and two strikes to Revere. See Ben Revere hit. You're going to, the left fielder and center fielder are going to be out close to each other. And they're going to give him a lot of room in right center and probably the line because he's not going to pull the ball all that often, especially against a left handed pitcher. You see that defense over shift. And the count where he is right now with two strikes. Center fielder may move over a little bit now that he's even in the count. But for the most part, they're going to play him the other way. Got us out to talk to Mahal. Even though Mahal's at 36 pitches, it looks like he's going to go at, uh, at least two full, unless it unravels here. Maybe into the third. Braves are scheduled to throw Kimbrell today, Christian Martinez, David Hale. Cunningham and the Phillies go down in order here in the bottom of the second. Nothing in Clearwater. Phillies lead it three nothing over the Braves.
Don't miss out on any Phillies news, alerts, or inside information. Sign up today for the CSNPhilly.com Phillies newsletter. Jim Salisbury is here covering the Phillies as he usually is in spring training. The Phillies are on top three nothing as we go to the top of the third. It'll be Todd Cunningham, Ramiro Pena, and Tyler Pasternicki who will bat for the Braves against Cole Hamels. If ever you could be dominant during a spring training game, that's what Cole Hamels is this afternoon. Four strikeouts through two innings. It seems like the ball is going exactly where he wants it to go. The command is really good in and out, too. He's using both sides of the plate. Fastball cutter and changeup. He's at 26 pitches so far here in the third. He's only allowed the double to Justin Upton. That was back in the first. One ball and one strike to count to Cunningham. Well, the way things are going, he'll be the opening day pitcher against the Atlanta Braves, probably against Tim Hudson on April 1st at Turner Field. Yeah, the Phillies will see Hudson and then Medlin in game two or vice versa. Talking to Roger McDowell before the game, it, it appears Hudson's still one, but Medlin had such a tremendous season last year that Roger couldn't say enough good things about him. Yeah, the Braves no longer have Tommy Hansen. He was traded to the Angels. Back toward the middle, and Cole Hamels, as good an athlete on the mound as you will find, one away. Yeah, he is such a good athlete. Cole's hit pretty hard, too. Nice play. Tried one more time today to get Roger to give the secret behind the hot foot that he used to give that would be delayed. Like he gave Vuk one one night as we look <laughs> at this replay. All right, a change up and a good play there. He gave Vuk one of the first base coach's box that he was out there a couple minutes before the thing flared up and the flame came out. We had a video of that at one time. And he was able to somehow set a fuse. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, he was great. <laughs> so to him today, you know, I say this respectfully, but you're one of the last people I thought would ever be in a position like this. He says, oh, yeah. No way. The way I used to have a good time. But he's been a very good pitching coach since Liam was only was. Uh, retired or left the Braves. It was Odie went on to be the pitching coach for the Baltimore Orioles with Sam Perlazzo as his manager. Yep. They're oh. great friends. Oh, and to the counter, Ramiro Pena over from the Yankees organization. Pena will be leaving for the World Baseball Classic where he will play for Mexico. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Fouled away and remains 0 oh, 2. Rodrigo Lopez will also be leaving to play for Mexico in the World Baseball Classic. Adrian Gonzalez, Edgar Gonzalez will be part of that team. Liner to left field, Darren Ruff scrambling for it, can't get it, and it goes on by him and rolls to the wall. Pena is on his way to second, thinking about three, and on his way to third, and he'll get there easily. Ball gets away, and Hamels and Kratz back it up. Ball looked like it was catchable, and Darren just didn't read it off the bat. It was sinking. Yeah, it, it was a top spinner, and it was going down as fast as it was going out there. And you need a lot of experience to see that thing right off the bat and know you, you do one of two things: you come and get it immediately, or you realize you can and you make sure you get back and it's a single. And as you can see, he got caught in between. It turns into three bases. So they'll score it as single, and you figure a two-base error that allows Pena to go to third. And now Pastor Nicky, who struck out his first time up. Infield is back. The fills up uh, one, uh, three nothing. And Pastor Nicky lines one to left center field that'll drop for a hit. And scoring from third is Pena. And it's a three one ball game. So the third hit of the day allowed by Hamels. You get that one up out and over the plate. Cole at 34 pitches. The Phillies do have bullpen action behind him. And Jason Hayward has struck out his first time up. Hayward chops one that'll find the, the hole on the right side. Pastor Nicky stumbled around second, so he'll hold up. So now three straight hits for the Braves and they have first and second for Justin Upton. Really good job by Hayward there to pull the ball with a hole open but Dominic Brown 
made uh, Brian Snitker stop that base runner at second because he charged it so well. Well, this is the projected lineup for the Braves. Now, we mentioned that they don't have a bona fide leadoff hitter. They have talked about Andrelton Simmons, uh, who is a fine prospect at shortstop leading off. B.J. Upton could lead off. Upton most likely will be the cleanup hitter. Freddie Freeman can move up and down the top part of the lineup. Dan Ugla has some holes, but still is a productive second baseman. And McCann's banged up still. But he'll probably be around in the early part of the of the regular season. Laird's are backup this year. Yep, right? Gerald Laird is the backup. Ross is gone. David Ross signed a contract with the Red Sox. He did. He was a terrific backup catcher. Want to know the count to Upton. Change up hit foul and it's one ball and one strike. Cole probably needed to start missing a little bit because they were starting to really as you can see in this inning get very aggressive early in the count because he's throwing so many strikes. Strikes are great. Sometimes Guys like Hamels and Lee, sometimes they have to miss once in a while or get it out of the zone because they throw so many strikes. Halliday is like that to a point, too, that hitters will get very aggressive and go after stuff early and hurt them. There's Joe Savory throwing in the bullpen for the Phillies. Phillies are scheduled to throw Jonathan Pettibone, Mike Adams, Jake Diekman, Ethan Martin in today's ball game with Savory there to back up in case he needs to come in in the middle of an inning. A little low and it's two balls and two strikes. It away again. Justin Upton is, is under control by the Braves through the 2016 season. That term you just used, Tom, has become more and more important to Major League Baseball. Under control. To have some kind of a contract situation where you have a guy and you're not worried about them, their walk year coming up. Meanwhile, his brother, who's on deck, signed a five year deal. Worth $75 million, so he too is under control. He's established in a little bit to Upton in this at bat. They may go away with change up here. See if they can get a strikeout or a double play ball. There you go, change up. And it's the fifth strikeout for Hamels. Now there are two outs. Well, the Braves had a busy offseason, not only getting the Upton brothers, but they also tinkered with a handful of other spots. Obviously, the addition of Chris Johnson fills a void over third base with Chipper Jones retiring. But look at all the players they lost, including Chipper Jones. Jair Jurgens on a minor league contract with the Orioles. Bourne is with the Indians. Hanson with the Angels. BJ hits it back toward the middle. Chase Utley is there. And Hamels works out of a jam here in the third. He does allow a run. On the RBI single by Pastor Nicky, he's through three onto the bottom of the third here in Clearwater.
Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Phillies with three hits so far. All three hits came in the first inning when they scored three runs against Paul Mahalam, who's still out there as we go to the bottom of the third. Phillies lead down to two. It's three to one. And Mahalam will face Jimmy Rollins, Jay Sutley, and Ryan Howard. In between innings, you see Michael Young chatting with Darren Ruff. That's Darren good. had a couple plays over in left field. We've seen a lot of that wheels, I think. Good. You know, Chase yep. Utley with some of the younger players, Michael Young with some of the younger players, Jimmy Rollins with some of the younger players. Great time to do it. Rollins grounded out to short his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. Takes a curveball for a strike. That's all that play, as we said, was, is all reading the ball off the bat. And it's easier said than done when you, you don't have a lot of experience. One of the things that stands out about Ruff, and I guess this, this shouldn't be an oddity in this day and age is just how hard he's worked though to try to become a left fielder. You try he, and you hope it can happen. He's worked with a number of different guys including Juan Samuels over in the first base coaches box. Ball comes off the bat different right handed hitter left handed hitter. One and two the count to Rollins. It'll be Rollins, Utley, and Ryan Howard here in the bottom of the third against Mahal. It's cracked foul and it takes a hop over the the diamond dugout. I just got the foul ball tossed back to him. Like, Man, a Hall of Famer tossed me that. <laughs> Ryan Sandberg. Joe Sabre, by the way, has sat down in the Phillies bullpen as we get ready for a new pitcher to probably come in at the top of the fourth inning. Looks like Mike Adams is starting to throw as Rollins is down on strike. Second strikeout for Mahalm, who's kind of found something since that first inning. And one away here in the third. There's Adams. Cole has made his way down a left field line into the clubhouse. He allowed just the one run in three innings, pitched very well. Great, great command today. You know, just see what he says about whether he thought he could throw it where he wanted to. Then they started swinging real early on him in that one inning and had a fielding misplay too. Here's Chase, who's single to left center field his only time up. He's two for four in spring training games, and it's one and zero. Oh. Chase also came around to score back of the first. Center field, that's pretty well hit. Going back on it is Cunningham. Back to the track. It is off the top of the wall. And Utley already at second base. He'll stop there. It's a one-out double, and he smoked it. Yeah, he didn't miss a home run by much on that one. Really hit it well. Got a little help from the wind taking it out towards center field. Look at that good swing. Look at the base that he has right now, though. When you watch Chase Utley hit, we always watch it his hands and how quick they are. But right now, his legs are stronger. Look at that, right on the yellow line or below it, and then bounces back. But when he has a base like that and can hit, what a difference. Now, for the Phillies, their fourth hit of the afternoon, it brings Ryan Howard to the plate. Howard doubled home a run and scored his first time up. He's one for one, he's seven for 13. Ryan among the leaders in spring training baseball uh, in batting average now. In fact, he came in fifth. Pretty, with that RBI double, he'll shift up a little bit more. And a pretty conventional defense, too, where the Braves are going to stay this way when the season starts with a left-hander. We'll see. I can't imagine they'll stay this way. Every once in a while, and I can't remember who they were. Team, and I see the center fielder straight away too. Normally, with Ryan Howard batting, the center fielder goes towards left center. Every once in a while, you'd play a team that didn't overshift it. One ball, one strike. The count to Howard. Outside, two and one. 
good swing he had in the first pitch. A fastball, and he went it. He, he was aggressive, and it was a strike. He just swung and missed at it. Those are the kind of things you like to see in an RBI situation. Opposed to take that first ball fastball, and then they start diddling around, and you're two strikes and chase one. He throws a breaking ball behind in the count there. Howard lifts it to right center field Cunningham over into the alleyway and Utley's on his way to third and if you're wondering whether Chase is running well and whether his knees are bothering him he's running the bases as if it was three or four years ago. Yeah, it's good base running too because you don't have to get the third on that play because there's already one out but he read that the outfielder Cunningham was going to catch that ball going to his left and really have trouble throwing back across his body so he figures well, I'll go to third and scoring a wild pitch or something. There he goes right back. And tags up. It's just smart base running. If there's any chance you'd be thrown out a third on that play with one out, you stay at second. So Mahal works from the windup with Michael Young at the plate, and it's one ball and no strikes. They're really playing him up the middle with the second baseman, Pastor Nicky. Young hits a lot of balls in the hole. To right. See all the room he has there on the right side. Foul deep down the left field line. Folks walking along the concourse have no idea what's coming their way. <laughs> Turned out to be a great day. There you go. How about that? Where'd that come from? <laughs> Some of the bullpen <laughs> throw it up here? In the dirt. Good play by Gaddis, the catcher, to keep it in front. See, and there's the thing about, as you said, Tom, a good play, but there's the thing about Utley getting to third base on that play, just reading the ball correctly. Maybe that bounces around, you steal a run then. He's very good at a walking lead off third, too. He, he knows how to do it where you, where you keep your body, where you keep your eyes, and you're in motion at the right time. Back toward the middle, off the foot of Mahalam, picked up by Johnson. And not in time, a run scores. It'll be a base hit for Michael Young, his first of the spring. And it's his second RBI of the day. And the Phillies lead it 4 to 1. Check on Mahalam, it almost looked like he tried to kick at that and see if something good would come of it. Like keep it in the infield, and maybe, maybe he wouldn't be able to score from third. Although two outs, he's going to score. See if he goes, if he kicks at this intentionally. I don't know. I don't know if he was trying to get out of the yeah. way of it or if he, act, if he kicked it. Smarter to get out of the way of it when it's hit that hard. Yeah, Johnson was playing deep at third, so by the time he charged and barehanded, Young was able to get up the first base line. Dominic Brown, last time up, singled. They have to be pleased with that play by Johnson. He did a nice job charging that, making a play out of it. Here it is again. <laughs> I guess he's just trying to get out of the way. I would think so. He wouldn't <laughs> want to try and kick save those kind. There have been guys that would. Oh, yeah. I thought he did when I first, you know, when it was hit, but I don't know. He's a left hander. I'm not going to sit up here and try and read, it, read a lefty's Those mind. Those left handers. They are. It's not their fault. Strike and it's two at two. But Carapaza, the home plate umpire. Carapaza was named to the full time staff of umpires this year. The three pretty good umpires retired Ed Rapuana, Tim Tashita, and uh, Field and Culberth. 
Daryl Cousins. Oh, Daryl Cousins. They were all good umpires. Inside three and two. They added three new guys. There's Darren Ruff on deck. Michael Young not being held on. He'll take off on the pitch. Dominic Brown just missed that pitch. He fouls it away. It was a breaking call. The hanger, too. Yep. And it remains three and two. Yeah, pretty good swing. Luis Avilan is in the on deck, or excuse me, is in the bullpen. Well, it's the pitcher's on deck circle, the bullpen. Yeah. Saw that guy last year. Mahomes about to throw his 62nd pitch of this game. He won't be throwing any more in the bullpen. He got his work in. I would say he has gotten his work in. In the dirt ball, four first and second for the Phillies, and Darren Ruff will get another chance. Ruff grounded out his only time up, so he's 0 for 1 as Brown goes to first, Young goes to second. Good at bat. For groups of 25 or more, receive special discounts and group recognition if you decide to purchase some group tickets. There are many options for groups to take advantage of at Citizens Bank Park, including private suites and pregame party areas. What better way to take in a Phil's game than with a group of family, friends, or business associates? Check phillies.com for all the great details. Well, Roger McDowell trotted out to the mound. They're going to leave Mahalm in the ball game as Darren Ruff. Who is 0 for 10 so far this spring? Will bat with a runner in scoring position. In fact, runners on first and second. Dominic Brown at first, Michael Young at second. Ruff just does not appear comfortable at this point in spring training. You know, when you're a veteran player and you struggle a little bit early, all that kind of thing, nobody, ah, eh, whatever. But when you're in his situation, you press a little bit. So you're trying to impress the uh, management. Darren last year as everybody knows hit 38 home runs in the minors. That hit some home runs in the majors hit some home runs in winter ball. Had a real good eye of the strike zone too and that's. Seen so far of him to me looks a little antsy. Which. You can understand it for for a young player. Lines that one towards center field that'll drop in for a base hit. Darren Ruff's first hit of the spring will bring home Michael Young. Dominic Brown goes to third and Ruff pulls in the second. It's a 5 1 ball game. That's a good swing he had there. Just took a ball away from him, didn't pull it. Hit it where it was pitched and got himself ahead. And now Freddie's going to come out, Gonzalez, our manager, and, and come and get Mahalam after that. That had to feel good for him. Good base running, too, by both Brown and Ruff to read the throw. This time was high. This one's not going to be able to get cut off. Good swing there. Pitches away. Hits it where it's pitched, and then they ran the base as well. Cunningham comes over here, and the throw is very high going to third base. Ruff reads that so he can coast into second. Well, the Phillies have had a good day offensively so far. They lead it 5 to 1. We've got a pitching change here at Clearwater. The Phillies lead the Braves by 4.
back here in Clearwater pitching change for the Atlanta Braves in the middle of the third Phillies have scored five runs overall three in the first two in the third and they'll turn things over to Luis Avilon who will face Lance Nix with runners on second and third Avilon last year uh, had a win and an ERA of 2.00 for Atlanta. 33 strikeouts overall. He went up pitching in 31 games out of the bullpen for Atlanta. And so far this spring, he's pitched in two games and he's allowed one hit and has walked two. He's faced just eight batters. Nick struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. And it's two balls and no strikes. And a strike, and it's two and one to Knicks. Nix will be followed by Eric Kratz. Nix is the DH today. The Phillies and, and most National League teams will use the DH for the next, uh, I would think, the next 10 days or so before pitchers start to hit. It's usually the middle of spring training that they make that adjustment. Spring training is a little longer, though, so that adjustment may not be made till later on. Ooh. Inside, three and one. Yeah, this will be a game normally you have the pitchers hitting two National League teams playing. But a lot of times, you know, they don't pitch long enough in the game to even get in that bat where they would be up in maybe a bunting situation, especially this early. Today a little different because they went longer. Three and two, the count to Knicks. And so far is one for six in the spring. He's played a couple of games as the designated hitter for the Phillies. He'll get some at bats and getting some, get some opportunities out in the outfield. Back toward the box off the glove of Avilon barehanded by Pastor Nicky and they just get Lance Nix. The Phillies are retired here in the third. They do get a couple of more. They lead it 5 1 as we go to the fourth. Baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Top of the fourth inning here in uh, Clearwater, Florida, where the Phillies lead it five to one over the Atlanta Braves. New pitcher coming on for the Phillies. We'll tell you about him in a moment. But first, let's bring in Greg Murphy to talk about the other pitcher, Cole Hamels, who 
Murph, I thought, looked very strong through three innings today. Yeah, and he was just in talking to reporters, and, uh, you know, he seemed to be very pleased with his outing, as he should be. Talked a little bit about, hey, I'm just building up. I'm, I'm throwing different pitches. He says he still hasn't thrown all of his pitches yet this spring, but he, we did notice this guy today. He threw a lot more change-ups. He was asked about that, and he said, look, you know, if you want your change-up to be your best pitch, which Cole Hamels does, it's a field pitch, and it's a pitch that you need to throw often and, and really get a feel for it down here in spring so that when you head north, you know you have it. So working on that today and, and working against a very tough Braves lineup, which he also talked about, he said, you know, it reminds him of the, the 2006, 7, and 8 Phillies teams where, you know, you got to face these guys three or four times throughout a game. You might strike them out one time, but you know they have the power to, to send any ball out of the ballpark. And he said, you know, it's going to be a challenge this year, but certainly he is looking forward to it and very pleased with his outing here today. Well, he should be. I think he's looked very good these first couple of outings, and now Mike Adams will take over for the Phillies. Adams in his spring debut. And the first pitch to Chris Johnson is taken for a strike. You know, I think the part, Murph, that you talked about, uh, about going through the lineup a second time, it may give uh, Cole an idea of how he wants to pitch these guys, that he has to maybe change it a little bit yeah. uh, the second time through. Well, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, we have to remember that these are spring training games, so he may not be pitching these guys uh, the way he'll pitch when, when they do head north. He really is trying to work on different things and see where those holes are and, and see what works against particular guys and what does not. And that's really what it's all about. You know, it's also interesting, he was asked by uh, our Scott Palmer about just this division and how the Nationals are a good team and this Braves team certainly looks formidable. And he said, you know what, that, that's good for the Phillies because it's that kind of division that will bring out the best in this clubhouse. Certainly that is what folks are hoping, that it'll be a very competitive division the entire year but uh, you know Cole's a competitor as are most of the guys inside that clubhouse so that's what they're looking forward to well, including Michael Young who makes a fine backhanded stab on the ground ball off the bat of Chris Johnson one away here in the fourth inning yeah, he makes a real good point about that especially not wanting to show a hitter maybe a pitch that you maybe just don't want to really bring out right now from the breaking ball even that little change up there as you see Michael Gets that ball across the field there. Well, he catches the ball when it's actually hit right there to him. Pretty good arm. Well, now Evan Gaddis is the hitter. Gaddis struck out his first time up. So one away here in the fourth inning. Mike Adams is, Phillies hope, is going to be the, the foundation of the eighth inning for the Phils this year. He has been throwing on the side. He's thrown a handful of bullpen sessions. Eric Kratz was saying the other day that he almost looks too ready at this point. And as Rich Doobie told Murph earlier today, Mike Adams is probably ahead of schedule as far as where the Phillies thought he would be. He had last year what they called thoracic outlet syndrome, which is a pinching of the nerve uh, between his top rib and his collarbone. And he said it almost felt like he was. You know, throwing a weighted ball all season long. So they took care of that, and he seems to be fully healthy. That ball slapped to right field. It'll drop in for a base hit for Gaddis. You know, one out single here in the fourth. Gaddis has a chance to make this club. He's a young player, and one of the guys they've had on the Braves that played one year and just quit. Just went and started driving across the country. They actually got him back, but he has as much power as anybody. On this ball club, he probably won't be the everyday catcher. It's going to be a job that he's going to have to learn how to catch and catch different pitchers. But in terms of hitting and raw talent, this guy has it. 26 years old, wouldn't consider him, however, uh, to be a rookie. But just in terms as a catcher, and you know, they can play a pretty long time. Power, you can't teach. Well, he's 6 for 11 right now in spring games, including the hit today. Sarge said 26 years old. He had 18 home runs last year. Here's Mejia who takes a strike. It's 0-1. Brian McCann is coming back from shoulder surgery. So that's one of the reasons why Gaddis has a chance to possibly make this team. Depending on the health of Brian McCann. Yeah, you know, well, with that operation on the, the labrum, really he should have been playing last year. And the only reason he ended up playing is because of uh, Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones last year, and he wanted to give it all he had. Brian McCann, fine catcher. But it cost him some, and uh, need your arms, your legs to be able to hit. Oh, and to the count to Mejia. Struck out looking his only time up. 
Back over the mound. Utley waits. Rollins picks it up and in time to get Gaddis. Ryan Howard looked like he didn't see that right away. And it almost dragged him off the bag. Well, it did drag him off the bag, but he hung on enough to make the play. Well, he put a little something on that as he comes in. Just about the only way he could make that play. Always important to know who's running as the ball gets him in the, the heel there. A little snow cone over there at first base. Catching that ball right in the webbing end of the glove. Oh, two outs. Todd Cunningham, the center fielder, is up for the second time. Runner at second. That's Evan Gaddis. One of the aspects that everybody knows the Phillies struggled with last year was the eighth inning. In fact, uh, the Phillies blew 13 eighth inning leads in 2012. They also blew a handful of leads with two outs in the eighth inning. They were one out away from getting to Jonathan Papelbon with the lead. And whoever it was that was pitching in the eighth couldn't hold on. I think it was eight times last year, Sarge. There were two outs with the lead, and the Phillies blew the lead. Wow. I mean, you think about even if uh, even if those 13 games, even if you won eight of them, the Phillies would have won 89 games instead of 81. Now oh, that's pretty that's pretty big. And I wonder how many of those had to do with defense or guys not catching the ball that maybe had some to do uh, with that. That always goes hand in hand. Well, and the other thing too, there were games in the eighth inning where the Phillies were down, let's say by one or two, and the game was blown open. Yeah. So they had no chance in the bottom of the eighth or the top of the ninth to come from behind. I believe that ball may have got into the press box toward the corner of it. Guys were scattering around. That's Dennis Deach who's standing up, went right through that window, right through, uh, right through uh, David Murphy, and Ryan Lawrence. Two balls and two strikes. The count to Todd Cunningham. Just missed inside, three and two. Braves are going to have one of the better outfields in the league today, probably in both leagues. Hayward came into his own. Well, he came into his own as a rookie, but really last year showed that he still has some some real good power. There's a strikeout for Adams, so he comes on to pitch the fourth inning, his first outing of the spring, and it was a successful one. He allows a one-out single. That was it. And he picks up the strikeout of Todd Cunningham to wrap up the top of the fourth.
Weeknights at 5, watch the best talk in Philly sports. Michael Barkhead and Philly's top sports writers have plenty to talk about on Delhi News Live. Weeknights at 5, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Phillies will hit the road tomorrow and Saturday. Tomorrow they'll be in Tampa to take on the Yankees. Saturday to Dunedin, which is right next door. We'll take be on the, uh, the Blue Jays. Jake Diekman is in the bullpen getting set to start the throw. Figure he'll pitch the fifth inning for the Phillies after a very good fourth inning by Mike Adams. And now Eric Kratz will lead it off in the bottom of the fourth against Luis Avilan, the pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. Kratz is 0 for 1. He swung at the first pitch his first time up. Sarge, you started talking about the Braves outfield. Hayward in right, BJ Upton in center, and Justin Upton in left. Athletically, is there a better outfield in baseball? Boy, I'd have to think not, and especially being uh, that young. I mean, there's they're, they're guys that can run, guys that have really proved it before, I think, is the main thing. It's not that they just have talent. These guys have been in the league for a while. Gaddis with the mask still on makes the catch. Ball was shot pretty high up in the air to the right of the plate. And one out. I think it could be fun times for the Atlanta Braves in that outfield, especially being able to play with your brother and know for sure that it'll be some friendly competition. Freddie Gonzalez, I think, is excited to, you know, about the the changes that his organization has made. And if you're the Upton brothers, Justin, who's in left field to, right now, and BJ, the comments coming out of um, from both during the offseason just that it was a dream come true as Ben Revere bunts to third and Chris Johnson's throw is not in time. Revere just beat the throw. The first base of Mejia, I think, was still on the bag. Well, what a tough ball to bunt. That ball seemed to be up and in and he ended up getting it down. That's one of the tools that Ben has. Take a look at it. Yeah, ball up and in there, but he deadened that ball. Look how he deadened it. Coming in, there's just no chance almost to get him. This guy can really run. Going to be really an exciting player this year. Bang, bang there at the first base. Fourth hit of the, the spring for Ben Revere. So he's aboard. Rollins lines it to center. And there are two outs. Well, Charlie likes what he sees so far from him. He has the green light, meaning that he can run anytime he wants. Yesterday, he ran when Ryan Howard was up at the plate trying to steal third base. That's a no no. There's Charlie. One of the reasons he's giving him the green light is to see if he knows. When to run, when not to run. It's the only way you're able to tell once you give a player a green light. Probably a chance he'll run here with Utley up and two outs. What do you think? Well, you usually like to give him at least one shot, but with two outs there, why not? Usually like to let a, a power hitter at least have one. Uh, Swing before you go. Outside, two balls and no strikes. The other thing that you're trying to look at as a base dealer is you want to try and pick a pitch that is going to be an off-speed pitch to be able to steal the base. A little quick pitch from... Avilan and it's two balls and one strike. Phillies lead it 5 1. They scored three in the first, two in the third. Offensively, they've done a nice job already today. They have five runs on seven hits. Utley has two of those hits and two of the runs scored.
You see him taking balls off straight away center field. It shows you that he's not too far back from coming back, I should say. I'd like to see him attack the ball a little bit more, and he's going to be hitting third, driving that ball out of the ballpark. got something to prove this year and sure he'd like to play about 150 games 155 games Charlie talked about giving all those guys days off this year and a breaking pitch from Avilan and a strikeout of Chase Utley in the side is retired no runs one hit one man left for the Phillies four in the books here in Clearwater. Well, Cole had a great outing as they stretched him out to three innings here. He's in command of just about all of his pitches. He throws that changeup in his sleeve. Haven't broken out too many of the curveball. That was a cutter there that you saw. Again, he's around the plate there on the flag. That's what you like. He's feeling good about himself coming off the outing. Could be our number one starter this year. We'll have to see about that. 5-1 fighting fields here in the top of the fifth inning. Looking good after getting beat up yesterday, I would say. All right, let's check in with Greg Murphy. Much, D Mac, uh, here with uh, Mike Adams. And uh, our first opportunity to get uh, to see you. I know you've been throwing, obviously, a lot of bullpens and work with Rich and, and the other guys. How did it feel, though, to be out there in the Phil's uniform for the first time in front of these guys? It felt good. You know, I've been, uh, you know, been waiting for this day, you know, just to get back out there after surgery and stuff and kind of see how it feels and, and really go at it. But you know, everything felt good. You know, the, uh, the half inning before was a little bit longer than I, I wish it would have been. But, hey, you know, I'll, I'll take all those runs. And uh, I'm just, uh, you know, looking forward to my next one now. You know, coming off uh, the injury that, uh, that we've talked about, um, is it a little bit different when you come into a spring and, and you're not sure, you know, just where you're going to be oh, in terms of the injury? Or did you know right out of the shoot that you were going to be fine and be able to throw in these games? Uh, well, no. I mean, I've, I've known since, you know, mid-December that I was going to be fine and ready for these games. You know, I think uh, the only thing we were kind of, you know, we're just going to take it a little bit easy, you know, from the beginning. That way I don't have to throw, you know, a, a, a whole bunch of innings before uh, before the season started. But, you know, I knew I was, I was going to be, be fine. You know, the thing was just, just get out there and, 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 you know, start competing a little bit. You know, the role of uh, that eighth inning guy in baseball has really started to, uh, over the past decade or so, it's been such an important part of a baseball game. Yep. Uh, you're going to be handed the ball in the eighth inning many times, and it was a problem spot for this team last year. How, how much do you relish the chance to, to help this team in that role? Oh, I, I love it. You know, I, I mean, to me, you know, eighth inning is just like closing. You know, it's, uh, the, the importance of it has uh, has really picked up the past few years, and, uh, you know, I mean, some of the best teams in, in the game have uh, have had strong bullpens, and, you know, in order for us to uh, to get where we need to be, you know, we're going to have to have that, uh, that, that lockdown-type bullpen, you know, uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So, you know, I'm excited about it. You know, I'm uh, looking forward 
forward to uh, you know getting some getting the ball handed over to me from uh, from our starting staff and you know, hand it over to Pat. Everybody's excited about it as well. Mike, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple days, I guess, back out on the mound. All right, thanks. Mike Adams, guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Well, he was excited to get back out there. I thought it was interesting, Sarge. He was talking about the the uh, length of time uh, from the bottom of the third until he went out there. He was probably all all ready to go, and and the inning just just. Yeah. Kept getting longer and longer. Yeah, he said it went longer. But he's right about one thing, though, Tom. You're going to need to have someone in that eighth inning to make sure you can tie it down. And he said also, at times, it's just as important as that ninth inning. And sometimes you're facing those guys that uh, hit the ball out of the ballpark. Every time you're out there doesn't make it's going to be an easy time for you. In that eighth inning, let me tell you something. You get tested just like you do in that ninth inning. Uh, a lot during the course of the season. Well, there's Jonathan Pettibone, who's warming in the bullpen for the Phillies, a starting pitcher in the minor leagues, and uh, pitching behind uh, Craig Kimbrell, who's firing in the Braves bullpen. He'll be the next one out for Atlanta in the bottom of the fifth inning. Jake Diekman's on the mound for the Phillies. He just walked the leadoff batter, and he fires a strike to Tyler Pasternicki with nobody out here in the fifth. Diekman last year, one and one. With a 3.95 ERA in 32 games for the Phillies. There were times where he was dominant. There were other times where he looked like a guy who was just trying to figure some things out. I think every young player goes through that. Great when you have that early success. But what it's all about is being able to, to do that day in and day out. Year in and year out. And usually the way that that comes is by playing games. Got to have the experience. Inside one ball and two strikes. You know, for the younger pitchers too, figure out what is your out pitch? What's your best pitch? You know, best pitch a lot of times Greg Maddox would say is the best pitch is to throw a strike. And I would think though as a reliever you got to know your your best pitch coming in where you can get a particular hitter out feeling confidence whether or not it's your fastball or your off speed pitch you can spot that fastball everything else seems to kind of fall right in the place i mean you remember Cole Hamels early on he won with two pitches. Fastball and a changeup. Back toward the middle. Caught out of the air by Diekman, and they will double up Ramiro Pena. He's kind of a knuckleball going back to the mound. Long arms. He was able to corral the ball and get it over to Ryan Howard. Take a look at it. Small off the end of the bat. So it's kind of coming back toward him a little. And after that, everything becomes easy. Now two outs for Deakman, and here's Jason Hayward, who's one for two today. Hayward is struck out. He's also single. Both of those at-bats came against Hamels. Now the first pitch from Deakman is a ball. It's 1-0. From Bright House Field in Clearwater, Florida, along with Gary Matthews, Chris Wheeler, and Greg Murphy, I'm Tom McCarthy. It's the Braves and the Phillies. A chopper to second for Hayward and a room service hop for Chase Up. So Deepman was able to rush aside the leadoff walk. Braves go quietly at their half of the fifth. Phil's enjoying a four run lead as we go to the bottom. Of the
Monday, April 8th, the Phillies begin a three game series against the New York Mets. McDonald's opening week t shirt will be given out for fans 15 and over. Tuesday, the 9th, is the Hatfield Dollar Dog Night to start the year for the Phillies. And then Wednesday, April 10th, is also 705 start. Order orders can be made very easily by going to Phillies.com. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5 1 Phillies on top. It's Craig Kimbrell in the back of the mound for the Braves. Kimbrell last year, 42 saves for the Braves, an earned run average of 1.01. Mm. He's led the National League in saves in each of the last two years 46 in 2011, 42 in 2012. He's now a two time All Star. And he's on to face Ryan Howard, Michael Young, and Dominic Brown. Can be very difficult to hit from the right side because he kicks that leg over. You got to really have the heart of a lion to stay in there in that batter's box as hard as he throws. Oh, that ball is well hit, and it's not coming back. Opposite field home run for Ryan Howard into the Phillies' bullpen. It's 6 1 fills the first homer of the spring for Howard. That's where you like to see him hit him is to left center. That tells you that he's staying right on the ball. And when you drive a ball that far, that means that you hit the ball right on the screws. I'm sure, he's glad to be able to see that and to feel that. Take a look at it. That's where you don't want to miss him. Sure, it's right down the middle, but the fact is, you still got to be able to hit him. There's that. Familiar pose that we become accustomed to. Oh, Howard today, two for three, a double, a home run, two RBIs, two runs scored. And right, he's now eight for his eight for fifteen this spring. Yeah, one of the things too, though, he's been the balls that he's been hitting have been hard. Young takes up and in. It's two and zero. Oh. So far in his young career, I can tell you, he doesn't particularly like facing the fighting fields just because of some of the problems he's had there in the past. Up the third base line, a foul ball. And he used that glove out there on that third base line with the ball girl trying to pick the ball up. Ball obviously took a bad hop, Sarge. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Might help Tony get off that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Three and one to count. Phillies now at six runs on eight hits today. They have three extra base hits, including the home run by Howard. Should have an aggressive swing on this fastball here. Dominic Brown's been on base twice today. A single his first time up, a walk his last time. I wonder if that's the last at bat of the day for Ryan Howard. Three at bats in the books, five innings. That's usually when Charlie starts making some changes. Up high, 1 0 the count to Brown. Well, Charlie says he likes what he sees with Dominic Brown. Said he's really attacking the baseball and before he had his hands where he just wasn't going through the ball. That ball is hit well. It's going to go foul, but man, it is crushed. That's exactly what I'm talking about there, where he's saying he's usually and in back of the ball now and just not feeling for it. When you hit a ball that quick inside, that would tell me that your hands have gotten a lot quicker. That ball inside there, 90 plus, he's able to turn on that ball. See exactly where this pitch is. As, see how he just turns on that? We talked about it before, clearing your hips. And that's right. What does he do the next time up, the next pitch? He goes outside. Chopper to shortstop. And that might be two because it was hit so hard. It is two. Oh, dropped by the first baseman Mejia, so not two. Six four on the put out at second. 
Yeah, he's looking at his glove like it had a hole in it. Well, it hit it right there in the palm. Well, he's tinker with the laces. Got to tighten those babies up. Don't have that had nothing to do with the drop of the ball as you take a look at this right here. Just hit him in a bad spot right in the middle of the glove. <laughs> <laughs> It's a brand new glove. Brand Does look new like it's brand new, yeah. uh... Darren Ruff uh, so far today a single home run. He's also grounded out to shortstop his first hit of the spring. They have by the way scored an error to the first base of Mejia on that throw. So it's the second error of the day for the Braves. Tell it's a little bit early too. Pitch is not as sharp. That breaking ball, he usually throws and just really darts down. That one there, a lot of break there to it. We don't have the gun on Kimbrough either. It does look like his uh, his velocity is a little slower than what it will be when the season gets underway. Yeah. But it's 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 still up there. Oh no, it's 90 plus, no yeah. doubt. Ruff hits it to third. That's a fair ball down the third baseline. Brown on his way to third. He'll be held there, and Darren Ruff will pull in the second with a one-out double. That might ease him a little bit, getting a couple hits in today's ball game. Yeah, he was starting to press a little bit there, and that's what happens with younger players. Even though he's done very well last year, since this ball is. Hit right down the line out in front of that just a little bit. Automatic double when that ball headed down that left field line. Braves have the infield in. Sorry about that, Tom. That's all right. They're down 6 1. They have Lance Nix at the plate, so they decide to bring the infield in with one out here in the fifth inning. And Nix rips one, diving stop by Mejia. He gets the runner at first, but Brown slides in safely at the plate. Well, you're not going to hit a ball any harder than that from Lance Nix. He does get an RBI, and it's now 7-1 Phillies. Now Lance sitting on that fastball all the way. Give credit there for Dominic Brown on that base running to be able to score on that hard line drive. Take a look at it as it catches right in the webbing again. He'll be looking at that glove. To see if it has a hole in it again. Steps on first by then. No chance to get Dominic. See him coming in and sliding. Just read that ball very well. Eric Kratz, who had a big home run against Kimbrell in the regular season, swings at the first pitch in this at bat. And Justin Upton following it the whole way as the wind takes it every which way for the final out. Well, Ryan Howard started the inning with a. A ball the opposite way, his first home run of the spring. And speaking of big swings, that's right. It's time to take a look at some big swings. Oh. Not only now, <laughs> but also when we get back. You got to stay tuned for this one.
heading into the top of the six with the Phillies in a 7-1 lead over the Atlanta Braves. And you know what, Team Mack and Sarge, uh, it's not just the players that are getting put through their paces down here in Clearwater. The broadcasters also working hard. <laughs> and we have video proof of it today as Sarge is stretching out for our early morning wiffle ball game. Now, Sarge, that was a good pitch. Uh, it hit you in the thigh. And I had to hold you back. I didn't want you yeah. to take out T-Mac there. Wheels, uh, <laughs> not the best effort. That although was... Sarge seemed to like it. But watch this. Wheels gets a piece of this one. Knocks it right past. I should have made that T-Mac, yeah, I, I should have made that you should have. T-Mac uh, at the bat. It looked deep, but uh, I went over the shoulder and, and let that one fall right Show in. Show off. And I thought I got all of that one, but uh, Wheels, nice effort, Wheels. <laughs> the game. Of course, Sarge had some post-game comments. Fun game to play. Kind of takes me back to when uh, a long time ago. Oh, I was going to say. Wait, just, uh, I was going to say, Sarge, did they have with the ball? Back the yeah, they did have with the ball. They had yeah. they had, uh, <laughs> You know what? Yes, they did have all of them. Yeah, no. you know? And telephones, guys. Okay? Really? <laughs> no television, though. No. Well, yeah, the big consoles. <laughs> <laughs> the big consoles, indeed. Guys, uh, all part of a, what's going to be a great promotion coming up on April 7th once the regular season starts. Uh, it's the last game of the first homestand against the Kansas City Royals. IBEW uh, Ryan Howard wiffle ball set is uh, is going to be given out at Citizens Bank Park. And uh, you see the mark right here on the ball. I think that's where uh, that T-Mac went deep that's right. earlier in the game right that's there. That's right. Well done, T-Mac. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. You know what? Yeah. It, it's, it's terrific. And kids are going to get this uh, up at the ballpark. Just one of the great promotions that uh, always the, the folks here with the Phils come up with uh, for stuff in Citizens Bank Park. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, guys. the guys at IBEW, I mean, they've been great over the years. We all know that. I mean, some of the t-shirt giveaways that they've had, but that is I think that's a good one. I mean, I mean, kids don't play enough with football, I think, yeah. like we did when we were kids. I mean, it's always a great thing to do. Yeah, and if you get hit with the ball, it doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> but, you know, again, a curve ball and the ball moves different ways. Yeah. It's uh, what a great game. How though. about that submarine pitch I threw to you? How about it? Waved it right on by. Yeah. Yeah, Sarge, you were you were wanting an awful lot if it didn't hurt. I mean, yeah. you took that one in the thigh. I thought you, you know were going to have to carry off. And let me tell you, that brought me back to my days like I was saying. I, you know, <laughs> automatically the, the, the bat was dropping. I'm staring out there. So uh, it got, a di it, it got dicey. Yeah. You wanted what? nothing to do with this. All it is is some intimidation. So when you intimidate the pitcher, guess what? He's going to throw you a fat one the next time up here. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> oh, boy. But well, we have to look forward to that, obviously, that giveaway and all the other great giveaways that uh, will be part of the schedule at Citizens Bank Park in 2013. Jonathan Pettibone, by the way, is taking over for the Phillies on the mound. Pettibone facing Justin Upton to begin the top of the sixth inning. Changes for the Phillies. And over at third base, Cody Ashey takes over. He's played pretty well there. Freddie Galvez takes over for Jimmy Rollins. And around at second base is Pete Orr. John Mayberry, meanwhile, is taken over at first base for Ryan Howard. Two and two the count. And the pitch outside. Tommy Joseph is the new catcher for the Phillies. And Ciarte will be the left fielder for the Phillies as we move forward. There's Tommy Joseph. Ben Revere and Dominic Brown, they remain in the game for the Phils. 3-2 pitch. And it's fouled away. Jonathan Pettibone is one of the guys we've heard a lot about in the Phillies system over the last couple of years. You see his numbers in the minor leagues last year. He had 13 wins between double-A and triple-A. Nine for the Reading Phillies, who are now the fighting Phils. Swing and a miss. It's the strikeout of Justin Upton. Pretty good late movement on that pitch, Sarge. Yeah, it sure was. It looked to be a little bit of a cutter going away from him. Toughest pitch, too, for a right-hander. You're thinking that ball may be inside. You see how the, he's off balance there, that ball way away. You know, the pitch like that, all you're trying to do is foul that off. Hope that you can get a, another pitch the next time. Here's B.J. Upton with one out, and he takes high. It's 1-0. Pettibone was promoted to Lehigh Valley uh, during the 2012 season. And with Lehigh Valley in seven games, he was 4-1. and one. His ERA, a very good 2.55. And Ashy with his first opportunity. And there are two outs. Third baseman, Chris Jackson. 
B.J. Upton is done. And Pettibone now will face Chris Johnson. Pettibone will probably start in AAA again. He's now 22 years old. Phillies uh, picked him up in the third round of the 2008 draft. He's got great size. He's six foot five and a little more than 200 pounds. That ball's hit well to left field. Enciarte is going back, and that one is gone. <laughs> Home run for Chris Johnson. It's his second RBI of the spring, and it's now a 7 2 ball game. That's the one thing. This brave team, with the athletes that they have on it, it appears that they're going to be able to, to score some runs. See where this pitch is as he turns on it. Boy, that's in the happy zone. Ball coming right down almost into his swing. And when you get extension, know it's going out there. You can tell by the batter's reaction, barely even looking at it. He can just go on sound. He knows that the ball is going out of the ballpark. I like this, though. He's ready to go already. And you get the ball back, a quick conversation with Tommy Joseph, and then all of a sudden right back to the mound, get ready to fire again. Yeah, well. Needs another ball when it goes over that fence. <laughs> <laughs> what another count to Evan Gaddis, who was one for two. And it's two balls and no strikes. Yeah, I marvel over guys like this that can just stop playing and all of a sudden maybe turn the flame back on to, to get it going again. And at the age of 26, I mean, you know, he still has a little bit to learn, but when you hear their hitting coach, Greg Walker, you talk about him in terms of his power and how much they really like him uh, in the uh, organization. And as a catcher, boy, I tell you what, you don't have a job with the Braves. There's a lot of other teams, especially, especially if you have power. Well, certainly he's going to have to learn how to catch and call a, uh, a game, boy, but offensive catchers. Oh. Oh. She is fortunate that uh, she was able to rock the other way. She's a good dancer. You're yes. right about that. She rocked the other <laughs> way and didn't have a choice. Oh, that ball was smoked. She can take a sigh right now and say, hey, is this really what I wanted to do today? Ground ball left side. Freddie Galvis is there. Jonathan Pettibone is going to have a few more pitches to throw because that throw is a little wide. It's the second error on a throw for Freddie Galvis in the last couple of days. It's just something you don't often see. So an E6. That's normally an easy play. He comes in. Well, he just he flings it. Ball sailed on him. Well, it looked like he might have tagged him. Yeah, Mayberry looked like he uh, had a chance to to make that tag and look like he may have, may have grazed the back of his jersey. Here's Mejia. And he takes a strike. It's 0-1. Showing a lot of agility, sort of like the way we were with the Wiffle game early on. I'm not sure if agility is the first word I would think of. Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, and one the count to Mejia, who's 0 for 2. Now, Wills isn't going to particularly like that. I'm seeing those highlights. Hey, you got to make that play. <laughs> he hit the ball well, but he's got to make that play on that pop up. Pitcher's not supposed to make that catch, Sarge. Well, he hit the ball well until we started spinning them. Once we started throwing that little curveball. That slide piece? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sent a many of guys home. It started off in the minor leagues. Pretty easy to hit that straight one. Ball gets away from Joseph and Gaddis will go up to second. And there'll be a wild pitch charged to Pettibone. Well, the Braves always seem to drag. Really big players. I mean, the only small players that they will draft are the second baseman or 
the shortstop, but for the most part of it, it's just the second baseman. A little spinner out towards short. Another chance for Galvis. This time the throw is right on the money. And the side is retired. One run on the home run by Chris Johnson. There you go, Sarge. Rushing them off. Owning the plate is what I'm doing right there. We'll be back for the bottom of the six right after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Is it a time you experience good banking? And by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment. 7 2 Phillies, bottom of the sixth inning. Each team has committed two errors. Hey, Christian Martinez will be the new pitcher for the Braves as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Martinez on for Craig Kimbrell. Kimbrell is credited with one, one inning of work. He allowed two hits, including the home run to Ryan Howard, and two runs. So Martinez, who pitched that in the bullpen last year for the Braves, uh, he will face Ben Revere and then Freddie Galvis for the Phillies. And it should be Pete Orr who should be due up second. Changes for the Braves. Matt Pagnazzi will take over behind the plate for Atlanta. They picked him up this past offseason. Second baseman is uh, Blake DeWitt, the former major leaguer with the Dodgers and the Cubs. As Revere leads it off and he takes outside. It's one ball and no strikes. Revere today is one for two. He walked and scored his first time up, but he shoots that one to left center field. It's going to split the gap, and it's going to go to the wall. Perez can't get it, so it's picked up by Cunningham, and Revere pulls in the second with a leadoff double. You mentioned Perez is in left field for the Braves, so he takes over for Justin Upton. And it's actually Tyler Pasternicki who goes to center field, the second baseman to start this ball game. Cunningham moves from center field to right field for Jason Hayward. The new third baseman is Joe Leonard. And now Freddie Galvis with the runner at second base. And Galvis right on top of that fastball hits a foul and it's 0 and 1. Yeah, good job. He was trying to pull the ball. You want to continue to play the game, get him over and get him in. And Charlie keeps switching them back and forth. Jimmy Rollins and Ben Revere there at that leadoff spot. I got to tell you, this kid there, if he's going to be getting on, he looks good at the plate against left handers. Well, Charlie just wants to see Ben Revere more and more just to see what he can do. And I would think that he likes what he has seen so far. He has five hits in 13 at bats. As Galvez lines it down the right field line, that'll be in for an extra base hit. Revere 
very easily comes home and Galvis will pull in the second with an RBI double. It's now eight to two Phillies. Well, he gets on. I tell you what, you just almost expect to be able to score. That's the kind of speed that he has to just ignite this club. Take a look at it as Freddie actually pulls the ball. That's what you want to do. Anytime you get a runner on second base, nobody out, you want to pull it. He gets the bonus, gets a double out of it, and an RBI. Well, now Pete Orr is the batter with still nobody out and a runner at second base. Pete has a home run this spring and a swing and a miss, and it's 0 1. Pete will be heading to Arizona to participate in the World Baseball Classic with Team Canada, which will be managed by Ernie Witt. Outside corner 0 and 2 to Pete Orr. The one thing too, though, for Orr, you know he'll get a lot more maybe playing time, a lot more at bats, which would be good for him. A lot of the guys that are going to play in the classic should get quite a few at bats, especially if you one of the guys that would be playing every day. Don't know if Pete will, but he'll get enough at bats. Outside, one ball and two strikes. The Phillies have ten players going to the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. There are only two other teams that have more than the 10. Some of them are minor leaguers who will get a chance to play for their respective countries. Outside, two balls and two strikes. I think that would be an honor to be able to play on one of those uh, teams and see what you can do about some of the other countries. Well, I think that, you know, what you said is just getting an opportunity to play. To the right side, that'll get Galvis over to third. Three unassisted, one away. Good job. Yeah, that'll bring uh, John Mayberry to the plate for the first time. Team USA has not announced who will start the first game of the World Baseball Classic. Many people think it'll be Ryan Vogelsong, who pitched yesterday for the San Francisco Giants. So they feel like he is going to be in line to. And to make the start, but I can't imagine any of these starters will go that deep into games. Oh boy! You, at least to initially. Yeah, you would actually uh, hope hope not because let's let's face it, the main event starts in April, and that is the regular major league uh, uh, season. I think, however, for me, pitchers are going to be, I mean, ready to go. They've been in spring training for a while, but you know, again, you don't want them, at least for me, starting to throw anywhere near. Seven or, or eight innings. I think you got to keep them on kind of the same uh, uh, program. Don't know how you're going to do that with the competition, but that's up to the management there in that league uh, to get the best ability out of those guys. But you just can't, uh, uh, again, pitch those pitchers uh, six, seven, uh, and, and eight innings. 2 0, the count to John Mayberry. The infield is in for the Braves. Phillies leading 8 to 2 here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, I think they have rules, though, on how much a guy can play, how many at bats, or how many pitches a particular pitcher uh, can pitch. On the inside corner, two and one. Steve Henderson, the hitting coach, along with Wally Joyner, they're talking to Mayberry Jr. about being a little bit more aggressive there at the plate. Henderson talked about it today about that fastball. He doesn't want, you know, his players taking first pitch fastball. They need John Mayberry to be a little bit more aggressive. And he'll probably end up doing a lot better. Well, I'd like it too because they'll call them in one on one to talk with them as opposed to, you know, just saying it at the cage and so on. They'll call them in and ask them, hey, What's your philosophy? What are you thinking about? 
I saw Charlie pull John Mayberry aside today during batting practice, and that was probably the, the same you know, oh, yeah. kind of conversation that you were just talking. Everybody's about. talking about at the same time because they know that the John, with the multiple positions that he plays, he can help this club, but uh, even base running wise. I mean. He's capable of stealing 15 bases or more. I mean, he's uh, he's a good athlete. Got to be able to read pitches, but more importantly, you got to be able to get on uh, base. Can't steal first. Three and two, the count to Mayberry with a runner at third. And he lines one to deep left field. Going back on it is Perez. Back to the track, and it's gone. A home run for John Mayberry. A two-run shot. And the Phillies lead it 10 to 2. The middle spot's been rather productive for the Phillies this afternoon. Now, Tom, when he gets back there, everybody will take credit for that home run that he hit, <laughs> by the way. Good to see Mayberry Jr. hit that ball out of the ballpark. Take a look at it as he back lets it. Ball getting out of the ballpark. Take a look at it again. Boy, you hit against that front foot. Get on top of the ball. It's going to go a long way. What a nice swing. Nice to see him swinging. Finally like that. Well, the Phillies now with 10 runs on 12 hits. Ashy rolls one to second base. And DeWitt throws him out for the second out here in the sixth. So Martinez has allowed three runs in this inning. Kimbrell allowed two in the fifth. And now with two outs, Dominic Brown will bat for the fourth time this afternoon. Dominic's been on base all three times. Yeah, these guys are getting a long look. Guys like